The Scarlet Knights top the Minnesota Gophers for their first Big Ten win of the season and their last home game at the rack, sending their seniors off with a 75-52 victory. It's media day here at the Rutgers Athletic Center and we got to catch up with the women's basketball team and hear how they're feeling and their thoughts heading into the upcoming season. The Scarlet Knights will be hitting the road to play Ohio State this Sunday at 2 p.m. Reporting from the Rutgers Athletic Center, I'm Casey Murphy. We're here with Rutgers senior defensive player Brianne Reed. Brianne, congratulations. Can you tell us how it feels to now have won your sixth consecutive victory and shutout of the season? It's unreal. Can you say anything about the difference um, from the first half to that last 20 minutes? Yeah, I, I think we created in the first half as we did in the second half, but I think there was just a bit more of awareness in the second half. And what were you thinking after Minnesota came out and scored that first goal at 42 minutes? I had no doubt we were going to come back. We've been coming back all season, and we just needed a little push, and that motivated us to come and score three more goals. And in this game today, Omaha kept the pressure on the entire game. You guys did as well. But what was the difference for you in both scoring the goal and preventing them from scoring? I think just keeping our heads. You know, unfortunately for them, they got a couple red cards towards the end. You know, one was justifiable. Maybe the other one, I, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't see what happened. But uh, at the end of the day, referee needs to make difficult decisions. We're here with junior guard Tyler Scape. Tyler, what a game. The team came back with a huge comeback after the first, played a nonstop three grueling quarters, very competitive. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really good. Um, we getting ourselves in the holes a lot, but this is the first time we really played our way outside of the hole. And you guys really started to take the lead in the second um, quarter of the game, and then you just kind of went on from there. What was the motivation? What was the drive? Well, we weren't um, happy with the loss that we took the other day. Thanks, Lou. You know, this is the first time that the Scarlet Knights have played UMass since 1994, and that was in the Atlantic 10 semifinals. And so not only is this a brand new team for the girls, but it's also a new team for head coach Mike O'Neill. The Scarlet Knights have been getting a lot of positive attention lately for their rankings, their undefeated record, and their ability to shut out every team that they played thus far. And just this past week, two of their strongest defenders, Erica Skrowski and Brianne Reed, were one of 60 NCAA men's and women's soccer student athletes selected as candidates for the 2015 class award for collegiate soccer. But from the sidelines, Coach Stringer continued to harp on defense. She wanted the inside to shut down for Wisconsin and continuously instructed her players to cover the lower blocks. Let's go and bring in our third member of our broadcast crew, Casey Murphy. She has more on the impact that Corey is going to make this season. Thanks, Kevin. You know, I think Corey Sanders is one of the most anticipated Rutgers players of the 2015-16 season, being that he was one of the top 100 high school recruits last year. And USA Today labeled him as the most entertaining hoop star, being that he is an explosive playmaker with advanced ball handling skills, and he has great body control. And Coach Vivian Stringer said that although she wants defense to continue to be the team's primary focus, she wants them to be mindful that they need to start attacking offensively, and that she holds her points guards responsible for executing the offense and to, no pun intended, get the ball rolling and to tie it all together. Back to you, Lou. One thing that's really turned around in this game is Tyler Scaife's confidence on the court. In the first 15 minutes of the game, Natalie Romeo was playing such tight defense on her. She was doing a great job at shutting her down. And you know, you could tell it was messing with her confidence a little bit, messing with her leadership on the court. And in the past six minutes of this game, she has come out a brand new player. Thanks, Lou. You know, a day like today, where it's cold and sporadically windy, poses a different kind of challenge for the pitchers because they then have to work with the weather. And you know, you want to throw those inside pitches because it makes it much more difficult for a batter to get a power hit, being that their wrists are much stiffer and slower than usual. And you want to throw it low to ensure that the wind doesn't pick it up and move it around too much. And you know, it's clear that both teams have had that similar mindset when approaching the mound. And whereas Ohio State has been solely able to rely on their power at bat to both stay in this game and now tie it up in the last inning, Rutgers very strategically used their ability to run the bases. With three steals and a double steal that contributed a run to the game, you have to imagine that catchers, veteran catchers such as Cammie Prantel on Ohio State are struggling today, staying in a position that keeps them fluid and able to be ready for a quick play like that. And the one thing about Rutgers softball is that they are one of the scrappiest teams in the Big Ten. And we saw that with their game against Hofstra this past Tuesday where they took the lead back in the last inning. Yesterday when they rallied against Penn State. So you know no matter what happens the next two innings, they are going to fight for the remainder of this game. Back to you, Lou. 